Hello, space enthusiasts! Welcome back to another exciting episode of Elon Empire. Today we have some thrilling news that you might have been regularly waiting for. After much anticipation of flurry of speculation, SpaceX has officially announced the launch date for their next mission. But that's not all. We have also updates on some significant changes to the flight mission that are sure to pique your interest. In addition, SpaceX has finally provided a detailed explanation of the highly discussed Flight 3 failure. So buckle up as we dive into this breaking news and explore what it means to the future of space travel. First, let's dive into the news that you're almost all excited for, the new launch date from SpaceX. Over the past few weeks, we've seen a whirlwind of updates and changes to the launch schedule, creating a mix of anticipation and confusion. Initially on May 11th, Elon Musk hinted at a launch window of 3-5 to five weeks. Just over a week later, on May 20th, he updated this to a 2-week window. Then on May 23rd, he refined this even further suggesting a launch in just 10 days. To add to this excitement, road closure notices indicated potential launch dates on June 1st, 2nd, or 3rd. Amidst all this rapid-fire information, SpaceX has now revealed the official launch date, June 5th. This announcement aligns closely with Musk's previous statements and the road closure schedules, confirming that we are indeed looking at an early June launch date. This precise date is especially significant because it mirrors a previous scenario before Flight 3. At that time, the FAA had closed the flight mishap investigation but did not make any formal statements, leaving many in doubt. Nevertheless, SpaceX announced on March 14th launches, which ultimately proved accurate despite the lack of FAA confirmation. Now we find ourselves in a similar situation with SpaceX confidently announcing June 5th as the launch date, even though it is still pending regulatory approval. Do you agree that June 5th is the most likely and accurate launch date? Let us know your thoughts by responding with a yes or no in the comments section. And while you're there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us bring you the latest and greatest in space news, and we can't wait to see you all ready and excited for the events unfolding at Starbase in early June. SpaceX has recently provided a comprehensive update titled On the Path to Rapid and reusability, shedding light on the cases behind the failure of their third flight test. This update not only highlights the critical achievements of the test, but also offers a detailed breakdown of the issues encountered and the steps SpaceX is taking to address them. The transparency and depth of this explanation underscore SpaceX's commitment to continuous improvement and innovation. The third flight test conducted on March 14th was a significant milestone for SpaceX, as they strive towards making space travel more reliable and cost-effective through reusable rockets. During this test, though, all 33 engines of the Starship and Super Heavy Booster ignited successfully, marking a full-duration burn during ascent. This achievement alone was a testament to the robust design and engineering behind the spacecraft. Additionally, the hot stage preparation was executed flawlessly, making the second successful ascent to the Super Heavy Booster. After separation, all six Raptor engines of the Starship ignited and performed a powerful thrust, completing the vehicle's full-duration ascent burn. The Starship also managed to test several key functionalities, including the payload door and fuel transfer systems, before beginning an impressive re-entry. Despite the success, the flight encountered severe critical issues post-separation. During the boost backburn intended to guide the Super Heavy booster back for landing, 13 of its 33 engines activated as planned. However, six engines shut down prematurely, disrupting the deceleration process. These engines were supposed to react to slow the booster before it reached the water, but only seven engines received the command to reignite, and of those, only two successfully ignited. This resulted in the booster descending towards the ocean at a dangerously high speed of over 1,100 kilometers an hour, ultimately losing contact 462 meters above the water's surface. The root cause of this failure was traced back to a blockage in the liquid oxygen filter, which disrupted the inlet pressure in the engine oxygen turbo pumps. This blockage prevented the engines from receiving adequate oxygen, leading to their shutdown and failure to start. SpaceX has made note that this component has been upgraded to prior to Flight 3, which has also indeed allowed the booster to perform better than in previous tests. However, this issue highlights the need for further improvements. In response to these findings, SpaceX has outlined several hardware and software upgrades for future flights. Starting with Flight 4, the oxygen tank will undergo enhancements to improve fuel filtration, ensuring that blockages do not occur. Additionally, software updates will be implemented to enhance engine stability and operation. These changes aim to prevent similar failures and support the booster in achieving a successful landing for the first time. The upcoming Flight 4 marks a significant shift in SpaceX's mission objectives, moving from the goal of achieving orbit to demonstrating the reusability of the spacecraft. This change in focus underscores SpaceX's commitment to making space travel more cost-effective and sustainable. By prioritizing the ability to turn and reuse the spaceship and super-heavy boosters, SpaceX aims to set new benchmarks in the field of aerospace tech. One of the most notable changes in Flight 4 is the introduction of a new procedure involving the jettisoning of the hot staging ring. This step is designed to reduce the mass of the Super Heavy booster before it enters the landing phase, thereby improving its chances of a successful landing. The hot staging ring will be jettisoned after the booster completes its boost back burn and begins its descent. 
This procedure, planned to occur around 3 minutes and 54 seconds into the flight, is expected to streamline the landing process and enhance the overall efficiency of the mission. Flight 4 will also feature several different steps compared to Flight 3. Unlike its predecessor, which focused on testing payload doors and fuel transfer systems, the primary aim of Flight 4 is to demonstrate the booster and ship's reusability. This involves a sequence of carefully planned maneuvers designed to bring both components back to Earth intact. The Super Heavy booster will perform a landing flip, followed by a landing burn to decelerate and position itself for a controlled splashdown. These maneuvers are critical for ensuring the booster can be recovered and reused in future missions. The introduction of the landing flip and landing burn before splashdown represents a significant achievement and advancement in SpaceX's landing of techniques. During the landing flip, the booster will reorient itself from a horizontal to a vertical position, preparing for the final descent. The landing burn, which involves igniting the booster's engines to slow its descent, will further ensure a soft landing. These steps are designed to minimize impact forces and protect the structural integrity of the booster, making it viable for reuse. Anticipation is high for this historic landing attempt. If successful, it'll be the first time SpaceX achieves a successfully fully controlled landing of the Super Heavy booster in the Starship. This milestone would not only validate SpaceX's engineering innovations, but also pave the way for more frequent and cost-effective launches. The ability to reuse spacecraft components is a game-changer in the aerospace industry, potentially reducing launch costs by a significant margin and making space more accessible. Recently, NASA's Administrator Bill Nelson addressed a Senate hearing where he discussed pressing concerns regarding the ongoing space race with China. Nelson emphasized the strategic importance of maintaining a sustained presence on the Moon, which is crucial for future missions to Mars. This geopolitical aspect adds a layer of urgency to the Artemis program, as China continues to make significant advancements in lunar exploration efforts. However, despite these pressures, Nelson made it clear that NASA's commitment to safety remains paramount. During the hearing, Nelson stressed that the Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 missions will not be rushed to meet arbitrary deadlines. The safety of the astronauts takes precedence over the schedule. Artemis 2, which aims to send a crew over of the moon has already experienced a nine-month delay. Initially planned for an earlier launch, it is now slated for September 2025. Similarly, Artemis 3, which aims to land astronauts on the lunar surface, has been postponed by at least a year to 2026. These delays highlight NASA's cautious approach, ensuring that all technical and safety issues are thoroughly addressed before proceeding. One significant factor contributing to these delays is the unexpected erosion of the Orion spacecraft's heat shield. This issue was identified during the uncrewed Artemis 1 test mission in December 2021. The heat shield's erosion upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere prompted NASA to reevaluate and redesign this critical component to ensure it can withstand the extreme conditions of space travel and re-entry. The resolution of this problem is essential for the safety of the crewed Artemis missions, as any failure in the heat shield could jeopardize the lives of the astronauts aboard. The delays in the Artemis program are also interconnected with the progress of SpaceX's Starship tests. Starship is slated to play a pivotal role in the Artemis missions, particularly for lunar landings. However, SpaceX has yet to complete the successful uncrewed orbital tests and safe re-entry of Starship. These milestones are crucial for demonstrating the spacecraft's reliability and safety. Consequently, NASA is closely monitoring SpaceX's advancements, as the success of Starship tests will be significantly influencing the timelines and execution of the Artemis missions. Despite these challenges, both NASA and SpaceX are steadfast in their commitments to thorough preparation and prioritizing safety. NASA's methodical approach ensures that all potential risks are mitigated before embarking on this historical mission. Similarly, SpaceX is making iterative improvements based on their test outcomes, enhancing the robustness and reliability of their spacecraft. This collaborative effort between NASA and SpaceX exemplifies the rigorous standards and comprehensive planning required for deep space exploration.